some point out that virgin birth is a common story in antiquity. Some will say Alexander of Macedon, Julius Caesar, Octavius Augustus were all born of virgins. Not physical virgins. Why? One of the things that was common to all ancient Mediterraneans was that when a lowlife had a son, that son was expected to be a lowlife. I don't consider Jesus and Mary lowlifes, but I've got to tell you, in the first century world, they were. Also common to all ancient Mediterraneans was the belief that when a great person had a son, that son was expected to be a great person. But what made no sense whatsoever to ancient Mediterranean people was when a low-life construction worker had a son who turned out to be a great person. They could not wrap their heads around that. That didn't make sense. In their honor-shame world. And that's what you have with Jesus and Mary. So they argued that this bizarre occurrence could only happen when God or the gods were some unique way involved. Only this divine involvement could produce greatness in lowly genetic stock. And so they thought God had to be involved in this way. And with the Holy Spirit guiding the church, we eventually come to the conclusion that is not explicitly stated in our New Testament documents, but we do have it explicitly stated in Nicaea and Constantinople. That from eternity, the Son is generated by the Father. We have this eternal pre-existence. Only John touches on the eternal pre-existence of the Son. And virgin, a word bestowed upon a constellation in honor. That would be something you would honor a woman with. The other factor is that ancient people used the term virgin in a way that did not have anything to do with biology. Virgin was originally an honor title. Ancients could and often did speak about a virgin mother. What they meant was that if a woman was truly honorable, you bestow on her the most honorable title Mediterranean society has for a woman. Virgin. Such an honored woman will bear the title virgin her whole life, no matter how many children she has. What was shocking to ancient Israelite Mediterranean Jesus group members was not that they called Mary a virgin, but rather that they called the Galilean peasant woman Mary a virgin. Mary was a peasant girl. She was a nothing person. Nothing people are throwaway people. The Anawim, like our migrants today. You don't call those people virgin. You don't give them honorable titles. She's not that type of person. So for the earliest followers of Jesus, virgin was an honor title, not necessarily a biological understanding of the condition of Mary's hymen or her uninterrupted celibacy. As time went on, more focus was placed on there being no human fatherhood to Jesus. And after Augustine, the emphasis on Mary's physical virginity soared in the West. The confession of the virgin maternity of Mary is not merely figurative. It needs to be understood as an event in the story of God's saving love. So don't lose hope with this last reflection tonight, Catholics. It can be established thusly. The received tradition carries predominant weight. By this connection, Christians presuppose that the church is guided and sustained by the Holy Spirit of God and led into the truth of revelation precisely in formulating the principal statements in its response in faith, namely in the baptismal symbols, born of the Virgin Mary, conceived by the Holy Spirit. In, this, in these, it expresses its firm certainty of faith. 
This certainty cannot be outweighed by or displaced by historical probability or cultural norms. Mary was unique because of Jesus. But we have to grapple. We must critically reflect. How can we as faithful 21st century Catholics maintain this belief and understand it and communicate it in a meaningful way to 21st century Western peoples? I leave that with you tonight as we go home. Enjoyable? Yeah. Challenging? Yeah.